So, the most important application of uh, ECG is in coronary heart disease, especially when the patient comes with chest pain. So, as you know, we are the world number one in coronary heart disease in incidence, prevalence, the complications, mortality and morbidity. We are world number one for many, many years and next many years also we will be world number one if we do not concentrate on the prevention of coronary heart disease. So, although we are world number one in all these things, whether we are world number one in the treatment. So, this is the biggest registry of Indian registry from Kerala, which told us how we manage our acute coronary syndromes. So, as you can see, the mortality of acute coronary syndromes at this point in time, especially in ST elevation MI, is almost 8.2 or 8.5 percent, which is almost three times more than the Western world. Second, whether you are giving the right treatment to uh, acute coronary syndrome, also shown in this registry. So, as you can see, the STEMI patients who are supposed to receive thrombolytic therapy, only 41 percent of patients are receiving thrombolytic therapy in India. Whereas, here you can see that here in this where non-ST elevation MI, this percentage of patients, almost 29 percent of patients who are not supposed to receive thrombolytic therapy are receiving thrombolytic therapy in India. That means, only 41 receive the right treatment and 29 percent receive wrong treatment. So, definitely we are not world number one in the management of acute coronary syndromes. This is because of uh, poor understanding of the ECG in coronary heart disease and also the ECG approach to coronary heart disease as it is and also especially the ECG approach to acute coronary syndrome. So, that is what we are going to see in this lecture. So, when the patient comes with acute chest pain, the first and foremost investigation which has to be done immediately is an electrocardiogram because the electrocardiogram tells you whether the chest pain is cardiac or non-cardiac. In cardiac, it will tell you whether it is coronary or non-coronary. In coronary, it will tell you acute or chronic. In acute, it will tell you whether it is ST elevation ACS or non-ST elevation ACS whether you have to give a thrombolytic therapy or not. Even before giving the thrombolytic therapy, ECG will tell you whether the thrombolytic therapy will work or not. And after giving thrombolytic therapy or a PCI, whether the patient has received the benefit from that particular treatment is also shown from the ECG. And for the next many years of patient's life, the ECG alone tells you whether the disease is progressing or regressing. So, such an amount of information is available by the simple investigation which you take within 5 to 10 minutes of the chest pain, acute chest pain the patient is got, uh, patient has got. So, it gives the diagnosis, planning the management, prognosis, the result of intervention and also for follow up ECG is very necessary. So, at this point in time, you must know what is the most important difference between a coronary angiogram and an electrocardiogram because coronary angiogram is very frequently done investigation today. So, in a chest pain, a patient himself wants a coronary angiogram. So, what is the difference between a coronary angiogram and an electrocardiogram? Coronary angiogram is a luminogram which tells you that whether the lumen of a big epicardial coronary arteries are normal are abnormal, whether they are obstructed or non-obstructed, if it is obstructed, whether it is significant or not significant. So, that is what the information you get from the coronary angiogram. Whereas, the ECG gives you the ultimate myocardial perfusion. It gives you whether the myocardium is receiving blood or not. The myocardium receives blood not only through the big epicardial coronary arteries, but also through the very, very small medium sized arteries, then the small arterioles and then capillaries. So, ultimately the myocardial cell is receiving blood supply through various sizes of coronary arteries. So, the ECG tells you whether the myocardial cell is receiving blood or not. So, that is the information whereas, the coronary angiogram tells you whether your big epicardial coronary arteries are normal. The ECG tells you whether ultimately 
your myocardial cell is receiving blood or not, the may, problem may not be in the big arteries. The problem may be in the medium arteries or small arteries or the micro vessels. So, ultimately, it tells you the ultimate myocardial perfusion. So, to understand it simply, you have to remember the how the a plant in the ground, plant in the ground or plant, plant in the fields is getting the water. So, although the river is uh, actually supplying the water, the river water comes through small, small channels and um, big branches and canals and also through small channels and come to the plant. So, the coronary angiogram tells you whether the river is normal or not. Whereas, the coronary angiogram tells you whether the plant is getting water. So, whether the myocardial cell is receiving blood or not. That is why in many times what happens is we see absolutely normal coronary angiogram, but still the patient can have an angina, patient can have a positive treadmill test. So, because the problem is not in the big epicardial coronary arteries, but in the small, small micro vessels. So, today we have an entity called microvascular angina where the problem is in the angina, but ECG may be able to tell you whether a trust or an excision, whether the myocardial perfusion is normal or abnormal. So, ultimate the second most information that we get from the ultracardiogram, which is not given by the coronary angiogram is the viability of the heart. We want to know although the obstructed artery is supplying a particular area of the myocardium, whether that myocardium is healthy or not. Only when the myocardium is healthy, there is a benefit if you open up an artery which is obstructed, which is supplying the healthy area. If the obstructed artery is supplying a scar or already infarcted area, there may not be big benefit by opening an artery. So, that information whether the myocardium is healthy or scarred is uh, given by uh, the electrocardiogram and we also have some indirect evidences in electrocardiogram from which we can assume that the myocardial function is normal or abnormal. So, this is a difference between a coronary angiogram and an electrocardiogram. So, first step in the uh, un understanding of uh, coronary artery disease ECG changes is to see which arteries are perfusing which areas. So, we already seen that in, uh, in the uh, section on leads. I told you the right coronary artery running on the right atrioventricular groove is supplying the right ventricle as well as the inferior wall. LAD is supplying the anterior wall and interventricular septum shown by the slides, shown by the leads like V2, V3 and V4 and the entire lateral wall covered by the leads like V5, V6, L1 and AVL is supplied by circumflex. So, the coronary arc socialization is supplied only when there is a ST elevation MI. So, whenever you have a ST elevation MI in this particular leads, you know that particular artery is totally blocked and the infarct is due to that particular artery which is called the culprit artery. So, it is possible first to locate a culprit artery from your ECG when the patient comes with especially with ST elevation MI. 